You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. First on 11 Live Morning News, it is going to be a hot afternoon for us. Temperatures will be back into the 90s once again, but some more changes are coming our way as we head into the weekend. Details on that coming up. We now have the latest look at Georgia's maternal health crisis and how the state plans to address it. Our Liza Lucas got her hands on Georgia's maternal mortality report. Liza, we have been anticipating this coming down. <clears throat> yeah, this report is significant, not only because of the numbers that we see here, but for the first time, families who lost loved ones were interviewed, and that gives greater insight insight into what a mother was going through or how things escalated leading up to that death. Now the numbers are heartbreaking, but there's also action here to save lives. Now there is a lag here because deaths take time to investigate, but from 2018 to 2020, 113 mothers passed away here in Georgia due to pregnancy or pregnancy related complications. 56 of those 56% rather of those women were black women, 34% white women, 7% Latino or Hispanic mothers. Now, as we previously reported, black women in Georgia are also two times more likely to die from pregnancy related causes compared to white women. A key driver of that disparity is actually cardiac related issues. Now, the report also reveals this statistic. 89% of these deaths could have been prevented. Now, earlier this year, I spoke with Dr. Natalie Hernandez of Morehouse School of Medicine. She's a committee member who helped with the report, and she pointed out that for every maternal death, there are about 50 to 60,000 women who suffer from severe pregnancy complications. And so I think that's something important to know. We still have women and birthing people who are suffering, who are living with these complications, who might have trauma, from these complications and we need to start thinking about solutions for those. The solution is so important. Dr. Kathleen Toomey, head of Georgia Department of Public Health, she's also talked about the importance of these mothers and the number of near misses that Dr. Hernandez was referring to. The report details the investment of the state when it comes to solutions and also further action doctors and hospitals and community organizations can play to save lives. We're going to have much more for you online. Liza, thank you. And our Faith Jesse has been digging into the issue of maternal health here in Georgia as part of her series, A Mother's Heartbeat. That includes breaking down which counties across Georgia are considered maternity care deserts, not enough providers. You can read and watch all of those stories right now on 11alive.com. Right now, police are searching for suspects in a triple shooting at a DeKalb County barbershop. Police say that the suspects came up and shot into that barbershop and then they all drove off. That getaway car wrecked moments later and the suspects just ran off. Two people were found shot at the scene on Thursday. They were in critical condition at last check, but then a third showed up at the hospital. That person should be okay. Police are still trying to figure out what led up to the shooting and ask if you have any information to please give them a call. This morning, DeKalb County fire investigators are working a case of an elementary school fire as possible arson. Two mobile classrooms caught fire at Woodbridge Elementary. Firefighters found a gas can, but they don't know how long it had been there. Now investigators are going through security footage. School leaders say losing those classrooms will not affect the upcoming school year. Four people were rescued after one of them was taken to the hospital in critical condition. This fire happened yesterday morning at Elliott Norcross Apartments. ICE officials tell us they were out there serving an arrest warrant for a citizen of Mexico. Officials say that man lit a fire in one of the apartments and then stabbed himself. This morning, 20 people are without a home. The family of Dr. Christine King Ferris has announced that she will lie in state at the Georgia Capitol. She died last week at the age of 95. Dr. King Ferris will lie under the Capitol Rotunda next Friday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. with a memorial service set for 1230. She is the fourth black American to receive the honor. That was a look at your Friday morning headlines. Headed out for a steamy weekend, but look at that beautiful sunrise. Yeah, nice. Not bad. We have a few clouds overhead right now. This is the Cater. He's looking uh, at the sun starting to rise up in the sky. This is looking now over toward the east. Not a bad shot. Not a bad shot at all. We'll get plenty of sunshine. I think a decent amount of it, I should say, uh, as we head through the early part of the day. Shower could break out at any time, and we're starting to see a few sprinkles over toward the Rome area. Look at the camera there. Didn't see much of anything doesn't mean that you won't get a dot or two on your windshield as you're driving around. 
Uh, that will dissipate, of course, and we'll see more of those isolated showers popping up once we get into the afternoon heating. Speaking of heating, it's mild out there right now. Temperatures are in the 70s everywhere you look, just about 69 degrees over toward Carrollton, 67 degrees in Blairsville. Those are the 60s. We'll see those temperatures begin to heat up as we head through the day. 91 degrees, our afternoon high temperature for today, uh, with a few embedded thunderstorms, so a 30% chance for those scattered showers and thunderstorms popping up uh, in the afternoon. Now, a 30% chance means that not everyone will get wet. We won't see that. Now, we're going to continue that. A low threat for rain for tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday it goes up. Monday, even higher. 50% chance for the rain by the time we get to Monday. Sunday, there could be some severe weather around our area. I'm going to tell you why. Look at what's happening back off to the west of us. We notice, uh, you can just see about see this on the screen. See that little yellow in there, that little yellow box, and then the outline box there? Severe thunderstorm warning, and then severe thunderstorm watch, in effect, for the thunderstorms out there in Oklahoma. Not dying out, but intensifying a bit. That's where we're going to see the severe weather for today. Uh, and that will, same system will start to move our way as we head toward the latter half of the weekend. Got a stationary boundary just to our northwest. I think that's where it stays. You notice the dark green shade over us, which means a general threat for thunderstorms, not severe weather. It stays that way for Saturday but notice that yellow gets a little closer. In fact, by Sunday, it's on top of us. And so we're looking at the threat for severe weather on Sunday. Main threat would be the damaging winds associated with through those thunderstorms and also some hail as well. We'll be watching that as we head through uh, Sunday into Monday. That'll be our better chances for the rain to be around. This morning, Cobb County's next public safety director says he has an important agenda and a plan to make it happen. He says dealing with gangs and adding new technology are priorities. Michael Register is stepping down as the director of the GBI to return as the director of Cobb Public Safety. He says people who live in Cobb need to be an active part of efforts to help stop gangs. Gangs continually recruit, and we see that recruitment uh, uh, being conducted on, on very young kids, uh, trying to get kids into gangs. And again, that's where we have to, as a community, step in. He makes the transition from the GBI to Cobb County at the end of this month. I'm Ariana Maniz, a company that owns Tara Woods Red Apple Investments. Say they're going to pay past due water payments days before residents were almost without water. Now, Red Apple Investments say they're in this situation because residents did not pay rent during the pandemic. In a statement, they claim that residents owe $225,000 in past due rent. Clayton County Water Authority says Red Apple owes close to $98,000. The county says that they made a payment arrangement with the company, but the company defaulted. The Water Authority says they even awarded Red Apple $15,000 from the CARES Act, but only received five payments in 24 months. The management company, they showed us receipts where they paid $50,000 in payments, but they were still behind $98,000. Residents that we spoke to said they're still confused why they're in this situation, even though they pay rent. Now, Red Apple Investments say they do plan to pay that water bill by Monday. Back to you. In just a few hours, the feds will release its June jobs report. A strong report signals good news for the economy while also giving the Federal Reserve further reason to raise interest rates. Economists predict it will show the U.S. added more than 200,000 jobs in June. It also shows 497,000 employees were added in the private sector. That full report is expected to be released at 8.30 this morning. Well, by noon today, we are looking at uh, temperatures right around 86 degrees. We'll have partly sunny skies. It's going to be hot this afternoon with temperatures rising up to 91. Some isolated showers will stick around at least through about 7, 8 o'clock tonight before they dissipate. Today, former President Jimmy Carter and Rosalind celebrate 77 years of marriage. Their journey started in Plains as they grew up just miles apart from one another. It has been a beautiful love story ever since. 77 years. Woo! You're getting close, aren't you, Chesley? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way down there. That's right around the corner. 77 years. That's Jeez. beautiful. Goals. <laughs> Absolute goals. All right. Stay cool out there on a hot, humid day and hope this drive gets a little bit better. We're going to pass it off to the Today Show. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Monday morning, everybody. Have a great weekend. Feels like 77.